Hi, and welcome back to Homegrown Florida. I'm Katrina, and today we are gonna go through the top eight garden pests that you are probably dealing with in your summer garden today. In my garden, I like to take the integrated pest management approach. This means I focus my efforts on the least detrimental and the easiest process in which to handle any of the bad bugs in my garden. For IPM to be really effective, you do have to be out in your garden every day, um, checking your plants and making sure that you can identify and monitor um, how pests are impacting your garden. You'll want to keep a good lookout for the type of bug that you are having a problem with because there are a lot of good bugs in the garden. Things like ladybugs, assassin bugs, praying mantises, bees, butterflies, caterpillars, uh, lacewings. Um, there are so many different kinds of bugs out in the garden that some are really beneficial and you don't want to accidentally kill these because they help eat up some of the bad bugs as well as um, they're really big for pollination and you definitely want pollinators around. So the first bug on our list today are ants and aphids. I put them together because where you see one, you definitely see the other. Um, ants in and of themselves are not a problem in the garden. The problem occurs with the symbiotic relationship that ants have with aphids. Uh, the ants will carry the aphids up the plants and then allow the aphids to infest the plant, suck out the moisture, and leave behind some uh, sugary substance that the aphid produces. And that sugary substance the ants eat. So um, they have this relationship where they help each other. And that's why it might be concerning that if you're in your garden and you see a lot of ants, you probably will see a lot of aphids. To control an aphid population, uh, first and foremost, I make sure that it's actually going to be a problem because a few aphids really aren't gonna disturb most plants. But if they do get to the point that the plant is becoming sick, the easiest way to handle aphids is to spray them off with water. And um, then what I do is I sprinkle down ground cinnamon into my garden bed, as well as kind of sprinkle it all over the plant leaves. This usually deters the ants, which helps to deter the aphids. Now, if that does not work um, or the infestation is so bad, um, lots of people revert to using uh, neem with um, a soap and water mixture, which I have done in the past. Um, I don't do it much anymore, mainly because I find that neem and uh, the dish soap is actually very bad on the plants. I end up with leaves that are dead. I end up with killing other good insects in the garden. I would say be very careful if you do go down the path of using neem soap water mixture uh, because it can be almost more damaging uh, than not. Then the third way you can handle aphids is simply to remove the plant that has the majority of them on it. If you remove it, it becomes like a trap plant and you collect all of them during the day and toss the entire plant and that should gain you some more time. Worms are another uh, pest in the garden that can cause a lot of damage. Um, there's pickle worms, there's cut worms, there's tomato horn worms. There is a very large selection of worms that can cause problems. And they will eat the leaves of your plants. They will burrow into your squashes, your cucumbers, your tomatoes, uh, pretty much any of your soft um, fruits and vegetables. To manage worms, um, the best way and the first way to try is hand picking. 
Um, so go out during the day, look for where the leaves might have folded, and you will find them in the heat of the day uh, curled around those leaves. And you can simply, you know, uncurl the leaf and pick those worms out and destroy them. If you're a little hesitant on uh, playing and picking worms, then I would strongly encourage you to get into a BT or spinocide treatment, which is um, every two to four weeks, depending on which product that you're using, spraying down just those plants that seem to be um, the host plants for those particular worms that you're having a problem with. This is especially helpful during late spring all the way to early fall when they are most prevalent. Leaf miners are the next bug on our list and while they can be unsightly to the leaves and the foliage of the plant, I have never actually had an instance where a leaf miner in infestation has caused uh, the detriment of the health of the plant or the fruits or vegetables. So. Normally for leaf miners, I do nothing. But if the unsightliness of the leaves bothers you a lot, you can simply clip them off or you can press the leaves um, where the, the lines are in the leaves and actually kill the leaf miners that are inside the leaf. Slugs and snails are the next guys on the list and these guys drive me nuts, especially right now. <laughs> Um, so they chew up a lot of the leaves to the point that the plant really gets um, hurt. Now, if it is minor, I don't really bother with it. Um, I just pick those leaves off and don't use them. Um, but when they start to really take out the whole plant is when you really have to start intervening. And so the best way to handle slugs or snails is to go out around dusk or even at night with a flashlight and pick them all off. There is slug repellent, um, these little pellets that you can buy that are organic, um, that you can lay down in your garden bed. Although I've heard mixed reviews at how well they work. And also, um, I have also heard that some birds like them and will actually eat them. And I'm not sure if that would be harmful for the birds or not. Leaf foot bugs like stink bugs or squash bugs are a real problem in the garden. Um, they cause a lot of damage to the fruit, to the uh, plant. Um, they can pretty much kill a plant if you allow it to get out of control. Um, and the way that I have found to handle these types of bugs is to spray the plant down super, super wet. I mean, really douse it. Then um, give it a few minutes, like 15 minutes, and all of the, the leaf foot bugs or the squash bugs or the stink bugs will start to climb up to the top of the plant because they like to dry out. So when they climb to the top of the plant, you're just going to go in there and grab them all and destroy them. There are insecticidal sprays that you can use for these leaf foot bugs, and I've had some success with those, uh, but for the most part, the best way that I have found is to get those plants wet and grab those bugs once they come to the surface. Number six on our list is nematodes. <laughs> now there are good and bad nematodes in the garden, um, but the bad ones are the root knot nematodes is the ones that I'm referencing. And those actually destroy the plant uh, because they climb up into the roots of the plant and create like these nodules or uh, knots in the root which make it difficult for the plant to uptake nutrients and water. Once you have neem toads, it becomes very difficult to get rid of them. I've known a lot of people that solarize their beds during the summer. They'll put their beds to bed <laughs> and then they'll lay a black tarp over it to solarize it. It pretty much kills everything in the soil. Uh, another way, and the one that I subscribe to, is to focus on growing plants that are nematode resistant, as well as planting uh, plants like marigolds that uh, deter them or cause them to come away from the plants you don't want them to and instead go to the marigolds. But you can't just plant one or two marigolds for this to work. It really needs to be a significant amount. So if you're having trouble in a bed with nematodes, 
I would say that during the summer is the best time to grow a large amount of marigolds and not just any marigolds. The African tangerine marigold is probably your best bet. The next one on the list is my nemesis. <laughs> Uh, it is the Luber grasshopper. Um, in my area of Florida, we are overrun with Lubers. And so they are everywhere. Um, so when they're in their young stage or their nymph stage, um, I will collect them and destroy them. They're pretty slow moving for grasshoppers. Um, and so that's the best time to get them. Once they've gotten large, which happens every day in my garden. <laughs> um, they'll be yellow and black and very hard shelled and they're very difficult to kill. They're um, not very easy to destroy. So I won't get into like significant details of how I destroy them, but um, imagine loppers or clippers. <laughs> um, and then definitely dispose of the bodies. I have heard some terrible horror stories about how uh, luber eggs will overwinter in the bodies of dead lubers and uh, then they'll come out um, of their uh, larva stage and their nymph stage um, from those. So just because you killed the luber this season, you also have to dispose of it properly so that that way you don't harbor eggs in your, in your garden. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up this last one, which is uh, your little mammals, you know, your birds, your squirrels, your rabbits, even the big ones, your deers, hogs. Um, there are a ton of animals out there that want everything that you are growing. Uh, the best deterrent for these particular pests is to have a barrier. As you can see behind me, I have a six foot privacy fence. If that is not an option for you, there is always chicken wire fencing, uh, mesh fencing, anything that you can wrap around your bed that will keep these guys out. And be sure to secure the bottom. They are very stealth little creatures and they will find an inn however they can. Another way that I deter them is I actually take my dog's hair from when I brush or hair from my hairbrush and I will sprinkle it throughout the garden. And sometimes just the scent of a human or a dog is enough to keep them away. But if you have a pretty significant problem, really the only option here is, is restricting them from the area and fencing is the way to do that. All the pest control methods that I talked about in this video today are all organic methods. While it's totally up to you as to whether to use an organic method or to use a non-organic non method, I really encourage you to try to find the least destructive method in order to get control of a pest problem. When you use a blanket approach or a non-organic method, um, you are killing off the good bugs that you really need for pollination and also for, um, for the good bugs to naturally control the bad bugs as they do in nature when you're not around or you know, long before we started doing commercial cultivation. I hope this video today helped you with knowing how to manage some of these pests in your garden and also um, open your mind to the fact that you know, there are good bugs and there are bad bugs and even the bad bugs do have a place in our garden. Um, so definitely think about integrating the integrated pest management um, strategy into your garden um, so that that way you are coexisting with the natural world rather than constantly trying to fight against it.